Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Happy Sabbath. We've made it through another week. <laughs> uh, I just I have just a few announcements uh, this morning, and then Deborah Skaggs has got something uh, to add to this too. Uh, Okay. Now I was going to go ahead and do it. Okay. But um, anyway, uh, on Sundays, uh, I don't know if, uh, how many of you are aware of it, but uh, the pastor, he's been having a uh, a prayer meeting uh, on Sunday afternoons at 6 o'clock. And uh, then um, we have our normal prayer meeting on Wednesday nights at 6. So... Uh, if you get have an opportunity, try to tune in to one or both of these. Um, then Monday, of, uh, we're having a day of uh, fasting and prayer. It also this week. Now, I've got a couple of things here. Uh, church business. Uh, this morning, we're going to vote to approve Crystal Fisher for the position of... Uh, Sabbath School Superintendent. Uh, she has graciously agreed to take this job. <laughs> so <clears throat> let's all have a uh, let's have a vote for this. All in favor? Wait a minute. We gotta have a motion in it. Okay. All right. <laughs> now we can vote. Do you have a second, uh, Elder Kirk? Yeah. Sure. All right, now we can vote on it. All in favor? <laughs> Looks like it's carried. <laughs> okay, uh, now we have another one for uh, Jan Ann Skaggs Langston for the uh, for Sabbath School Secretary. Do we have a motion for that? All right, second. We have a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all in favor? Aye. Second is Chrissy. Yes. That's done. And now that's done. <laughs> yep, they all. All right, now then we can move along here and we uh, still have a. Good morning, everyone, and happy Sabbath. Um, I let you know that Daniel Rice, that we've been praying for, it's a miracle, uh, that he really was able to get out of the hospital and come home on Monday. So he's home and he is restoring his relationship with his sister Marilyn and brother-in-law James uh, and uh, sister Norma. These people have not spoken in over 20 years. And so this is a wonderful thing. And I think he's been in touch with his five children too. So that is wonderful. He's, I, I visited him twice this week and he said for y'all to come by and see him. Uh, he lives right down the road. If you turn right and go down to Ray Mountain Road, it's the next drive on the right. He's at one, uh, at 1493 A. Uh, he's in a little camper there, so you're welcome to go visit him. Don't go today, though, because I think his sister is supposed to be taking him out today. So uh, keep praying for Daniel. Uh, he, he still needs uh, further healing. And also then, um, our church board this week uh, were made aware of um, a Adventist couple, I guess it is, that um, they're like 50 miles uh, from the Ukraine border, and they're in Romania, and they have a beautiful hotel there. Uh, and this was featured, I think, on the uh, the Hope Channel. And Pastor Bachu uh, were, was their parents' pastor when he was over there. So let me just read what Pastor Bachu sent, and we read at our church board meeting uh, on March 14th of 2022 is when this information came in. In all, more than 2.8 million refugees have fled the war since the beginning of Russia's invasion of Ukraine on February 24th and until March the 14th, according to the United Nations, 2.8 million refugees. The main countries 
as a first refugee are Poland, Romania, and Moldova. Then they migrate from these countries to Germany, Spain, Italy, France, and other countries in Western Europe. Since the beginning of this crisis until March 14th, 425,786 Ukrainian citizens entered Romania. That's 425,786 Ukrainian citizens came into Romania. This is from the Hope Channel, Romania. A report with an Adventist family of Romanians located 50 miles from the border with Ukraine. As a pastor, when I was in Romania, I pastored the and this is from Pastor Bachu. He pastored the parents of these children who now also have children and who built a boarding house with 50 rooms. I know them personally and have great confidence in the work they do. They had a prosperous business until the war in Ukraine began. Since February this year, they have stopped renting to Romanians and opened the boarding house only for refugees, offering them accommodations, meals, hygiene products, essential medicines, as well as the cost of transportation to other destination countries from the refugees they cannot afford. Everything is free. They do not charge these people. The Hope TV channel interviewed them and then presented the story of the national t on the national TV channel. Here's the summary of their interview. And I can't pronounce their names. Um, it's I-O-N-U-T, Anut, <laughs> and his wife, G Gianna uh, Simdia. <laughs> they provided their boarding house in Bama, a certain county, <clears throat> to accommodate refugees from Ukraine. More than 300 people have been housed since the beginning of the war. The refugees receive accommodations, food, medicine, medical care, and some of them were helped with money to reach other countries in the European Union. Uh, this gentleman is an entrepreneur and his wife is a pediatrician and they have four wonderful children. On the second day after the start of the war, he went to the customs and took a group of seven young Ukrainians and housed them in his own house. The need for accommodation was very high, and they made available to the refugees the boarding house, which was a family business, but which has now become a refugee for people fleeing the war. In addition to food and accommodation, this family organizes for Ukrainian children movie night, origami, board games, movement games and even artistic movements with music and good cheer. Their example also motivated other people who jumped in to aid the refugees. People with a big heart supported financially with food and different products or through volunteer actions, the, the refugees hosted at this boarding house and its, uh, its translated name is Evergreen Boarding House in Bama. This couple, found out many sad stories of people fleeing the war accompanied by their children. The refugees consider them two angels on earth and are amazed by the hospitality and warmth with which they receive um, in this hotel. Two of the refugees in Ukraine were going to be telling on this show about their difficult times. Um, these these uh, people are absolutely doing what God wants them to do by opening their home, their their business, and their hearts to help these people uh, during this war. So this morning, we are asking for anyone who's impressed to give to the Ukraine relief offering this morning. This needs to be above and beyond what you're giving to our church. It needs to be a sacrificial offering. And then Pastor Bachu knows um, the pastor over there, and he will be getting the money straight to them. ADRA is helping, but ADRA is kind of a big pot, and so we're going to put it in this smaller pot, and we feel like it'll be more effective. So please give as, as your heart leads you to this wonderful um, uh, relief effort uh, done by these, these two, um, this young couple. Thank you so much. Just one, one uh, uh, 
just in case you, you know there's maybe you can actually either put that offering in an envelope and mark it Ukraine relief or what we'll do is is that if you do it as a loose offering we'll count that towards the it's for the church budget okay today so please mark put in a tithe envelope and mark it specifically Ukraine relief offering that way we can you know separate out uh, what is what thank you so much Good morning, won't you stand with me for our call to worship. It's taken from the book of Isaiah chapter 43, and it reads this way. But now, thus says the Lord who created you, and he who formed you, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Father, what you have just said about us in these verses says so much about you. You have redeemed us. You have called us yours. That gives us a certain title in this universe. And it makes you worthy of our worship. And this morning, Lord, we come to worship you. To open your word together. And to hear your spirit speak to our hearts. May all that is said and done and thought in this room this morning be to your honor and to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Remain standing for our opening hymn. Gina, would you join me in singing In the Garden? This is one of the beautiful pieces we have in our record of hymns. I come to the garden of love To be still on the road And the voice of the God my ear The sound of his soul's Oh, 
Please be seated. Um, it's time for our offering call, and today uh, it will be for um, our church budget. Um, any offering that is loose that is put in our little schoolhouse there uh, will go to church budget. If you want it to go to something else, be sure and designate it on the tithe envelope, such as the Ukraine relief offering. All right, this is called the invisible driver. Psalm 18, two, the Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. We worship God with our resources because he is our sure deliverer. From his appointment when he was 15 until his old age, King David had a long and perilous journey through many dangers to name a few, there were lions and bears. There was Goliath the giant, Saul the envious king, and Absalom the overly ambitious son. For keeping him safe, David burst into praises, worshiping God as the rock, the fortress, and the deliverer. And this is a little story about a missionary family in Madagascar who were delivered. Um, they had experienced God's miraculous presence one early morning when the family of three with a nine-month-old baby together with some friends started a 12-hour road trip. By midday, after a good lunch, they set out immediately so they wouldn't miss their meeting. So heading west, the sun began to set in front of them. Conversation became sparse and finally the only noise was the snoring from the front passenger seat. The driver started feeling really sleepy. He dozed off several times, but he was determined to reach their destination on time, so he sped up. Then, for a few seconds, he blacked out. A branch violently hit the front uh, windshield. The car was seriously damaged, but miraculously, the occupants only had some minor bruises. The baby fell on the small foam mattress that the parents had bought the day before. Uh, and day before <laughs> just a, they were just a few um, a short distance away from kids that were playing soccer too they were shocked but the kids were but they weren't harmed later someone realized that the vehicle had passed perfectly between two trees there were ditches on both sides of this road except where the car had left the tarmac the outcome would have been very different without the intervention of an invisible driver. The God of David and the missionary family is not less active today. Do you think that the deliverer deserves our full worship? This week, through our tithes and offerings, please give back what already belongs to God in your tithes and offerings. Thank you very much, and let's pray. Lord, we are thankful for you being our rock, our fortress, and deliverer. Accept our praises and accept our offerings and multiply them in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.
Good morning, kids. I think we're light on the children here today, so everyone else can join in if they wish to. Um, so today we're going to talk about did you know from the Bible and do some Bible definitions. And learning more about the Bible is fun. Every word in the Bible has special meaning. And it brings you closer to God when you read the Bible. So does anyone know what an asp is in the Bible? Do you know what that word means out of the King James Bible? Can you show her this, Susan? Can you show her that picture? Show the picture to Do you know what that is? Do you know what this is? Right. So in the Bible, when you see the word asp, it can mean a snake or also sometimes called an adder or a viper, and it's poisonous. <laughs> so that's a dangerous snake. And you see that referenced a lot in Isaiah. Do you know what a cockatrice is? Anyone? Show this one to you as well. So cockatrice is, they feel also a snake because um, in Isaiah as well, they talk about it's kind of scary to put your hand in the den of a cockatrice and that um, it has fiery poison and et cetera. And so they believe the cockatrice is a dangerous and poisonous snake as well, but they also call it a serpent. They talk about it having a bit of horns on its head, etc. So it could kind of looking like a rooster, and it could be a um, horned viper because they look like that. Does anyone know what a dromedary is? Do you know what a dromedary is? <laughs> oh, good. Yes, here you go. Show that picture to her. Can you show the picture to her? So a dromedary is a one-humped camel, a camel with one hump. And you can see that referenced in Jeremiah. I have another one. Do you know what this is? A buzzard, yeah, very, very good. It's a large bird, and it is um, called an ossifrage, and it is referenced in Deuteronomy and Leviticus. And does anyone know what a buckler is? Do you know what a buckler is? Do you know after seeing the picture? What is that? A buckler is a shield. So it's a metal shield, a round metal shield. It's usually used with a sword. It has a metal grip as well holding it. Do you know what a dale is? Anyone? <laughs> a dale is a valley. And that is referenced in Genesis and 2 Samuel. Does anyone know what the word divers means in the Bible? Divers is, means several or many, and it's usually talking, uh, used when talking about colors or cities. So divers is, um, you often see the word divers colors and divers cities when used in a sentence. And that is used 34 times in the Bible. You'll see it almost everywhere, but it's definitely used in 2 Samuel, Proverbs, and Psalms. Do you know what a timbrel is? 
A timbrel is a musical instrument like a tambourine. And it's used five times in the King James Version, and it's used in Psalms and Exodus. And in Exodus, when they were leaving Egypt, they were playing the timbrel. Do you know what a psaltery is? So a psaltery is a musical instrument as well. And so in older times, in the Bible times, it was more of a, a small square or semi-triangle. And then the more current versions of the psaltery are more like a tall triangle. And the psaltery is referenced 13 times in the Bible, and it is in Psalms and Daniel. And I'm going to play just a little bit on the psaltery. Do you know what it sounds like? Thank you very much. So the psaltery is a stringed instrument, kind of like a harp. See, that's what a psaltery sounds like. And that young lady from Japan is considered one of the best psaltery players in the world. And um, she still plays the psaltery and plays it really well. <laughs> so, so remember children, remember what we learned from today. There's a lot of words to look up in the Bible when you don't know what they mean. And it's fun to read the Bible. Good morning again. <clears throat> we have uh, gotten to the time where it is time for our morning prayer. And uh, I'm sure probably most of you have a special prayer for you that you would like uh, to be remembered this morning. And if you do, would you please raise your hand? God's, God can see each of your hands. And... Uh, this morning as I have the special prayer, if there's any of you who would like to come up front here with me, that would be great. Uh, so, and if, if not, you can kneel where you're at. That would be great as well. Father in heaven, as we come before you this morning, we're thankful and grateful that we can come to this place and worship you. And Lord, we're also thankful for, or I'm thankful for each person who is here this morning. And I pray, Lord, for each one who is sick and who cannot be here today. I pray for them that for healing and that you can that they will be able to come back and join us lord lord i also pray for the people in ukraine who are trying to get out of there and get to a safer place lord i pray for them i pray that you will guide and direct their steps and that lord that this conflict could come to us fast and with no more bloodshed or hurt. Lord, I pray that you would be with Jeffrey this morning 
as he brings us a message from you, Lord. Watch over him and protect him and his family. Be with each one here. In Jesus' name, amen. morning. <clears throat> Our scripture reading this morning comes from Matthew, the 13th chapter, um, verses 37 to 40. So if you'd like to turn to your Bibles, we can give you just a minute and we'll read our scripture reading. <clears throat> Jesus is, uh, he's telling a lot of uh, parables in this chapter. <clears throat> uh, about the mustard seed, and this is the parable of the weeds. It says, he answered, the one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are the angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out his kingdom, everything that causes sin, and all who do evil. Hello. That, did, 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 did they do the switch? How about the microphone? Is that better? Ah. All right. Oh, that's that's too much. There we go. I am very thankful for those who have stepped up to help us in the audiovisual department. Right now we have two rookies in there. This is, uh, they're flying solo for their first time. I'm excited. I think that's the right word. <laughs> do, do, do you know, <laughs> do you, uh, do you know what it's supposed to mean when you buy something organic? Just so that we're all on the same page, uh, when we're when we're talking about organic foods, it means produced or in, or involving production without the use of chemical fertilizers, pesticides, or other artificial agents. Uh, hmm. D did you switch the projector down one, or it should be on B? Ah, there it is. Yay. It'll come here in just a second. Whew. Okay. Um, did anybody notice the title of my sermon today? All right. Well, good. Yeah. Um, at least you're strange. <laughs> why, would, why, would I, why would I go to listen to a sermon about organic gardening, right? As a young man, I knew a pastor who really liked to talk about his garden uh, a lot. But today, we're going to be talking about organic gardening as it applies to the parable of the sower. And this last week, I had an encounter that, uh, that I'd like to talk about with you, and it has to do with gardening, but just likely not the kind of gardening that you might think. So let us pray together one more time this morning. 
Father in heaven, I pray now that the message that's on my heart would be the message from you and that the ears that this message falls upon would be receptive, that hearts would be changed not because of my voice, but because of your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Today we're going to be spending most of our time in the book of Luke. Uh, currently I'm reading through this, this book each morning as, as my devotional, and I would encourage you to do that as well. If you haven't done that in a while, Luke has a very unique perspective on the gospel because Luke's gospel is a physician of the time who has gone about to set a record. If you look right at the beginning of chapter 1, it explains what he's doing. And he's a physician who is going and interviewing people to understand better who this Jesus character was. And eventually he becomes aware that the Jesus character is and not just was, if that makes sense, because he was resurrected. But I would encourage you to give Luke another, another go because every time you read the Bible in prayer, God reveals something new and different to you than he had before. I find that every week leading Sabbath school, it's just amazing how things are new every time. But our scripture reading today was from Matthew chapter 13. And you might think that it applies to what we're reading here because the parable of the sower actually is found in all three of the first three Gospels. But that's not what was read this morning. And it's kind of the trick question that's going to come a little later. So maybe, maybe you'll get it. I don't want to make anybody look bad. That's not my point, but I want us to remember. We're going to be looking at Luke chapter 8, verses 4 through 8 and 11 through 15. And it starts this way. And when a great multitude had gathered, and they had come to him from every city, he spoke by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trampled down, and the birds of the air devoured it. Some fell on rock, and as soon as it sprang up, it withered, because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. But others fell on good ground, sprang up, and yielded a crop a hundredfold. When he had said these things, he cried, He who has ears, let him hear. This parable might seem simple enough, right? And in fact... Jesus said, he who has ears, which was everybody, because before he talked in parables, what did he do? He would have healed anybody that couldn't hear. Otherwise, what's the point of presenting the parables? So he would have healed them. And he says, if you have ears, then listen to what I've just said. Simple enough. But right after he tells this parable, his disciples go up to him and they said, what? What does this parable mean? What are you talking about? And it's good that they did that. Because now we don't have to assume anything or presume anything. We can read the words of Jesus himself to better understand the parable. Now the parable is this, Jesus said. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. But the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, they receive the word with joy. And these have no root, who believe for a while, and in time of temptation fall away. Now the ones that fell among thorns are those, when they have heard, Go out and are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life, and bring no fruit to maturity. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it 
and bear fruit with patience. This was a big deal for Jesus to say. Because basically Jesus is equating himself to the sower. And he's saying, I am doing what I've just expressed to you. And this is going to be the reaction of people. These are the different kinds of people that are going to hear what I have to say. And you, not just his disciples, but the leaders, should not question what I'm telling you. Parentheses, because I'm the son of God. That's what Jesus is saying. We have several characters in this parable. We have the sower. We have the wayside. The birds, the rock, the thorns, the good ground, and the crop. All of these representing people. A different kind of person. And in fact... This room, everyone in this room is represented here, one way or another. Everyone in the world is represented here, one way or another. The sower, the main character. This is the trick question, by the way. Who is the sower? <laughs> and I told you it was a trick question. <laughs> The, the scripture that was read before that Miss Debbie shared with us, it talks about the sower being God himself. But that was the parable about the wheat and the tares. This is a different parable. And while in this story, as Jesus is, is pronouncing this, he is the sower. But so are the disciples so became the disciples, so became the early church, so became Christianity, so became you when you came into the knowledge of Jesus Christ. You became the main character. You became the sower. In John 12, 24, Jesus says, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, produces much grain. He was talking about himself. In John chapter 12, this is just after John chapter 11. All right. And in John chapter 11 is the story of Lazarus, who had died and Jesus had raised him from the dead. And now Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem for what purpose? Passover, more specifically, to be the Passover lamb. He's going there to die. And he's trying to help his disciples understand that when I die, there will be much produced from that death. Let's face it, we have nothing of value within ourselves. Nothing except that Christ resides in us. And that's when we become the sower, is when Christ is in us. The wayside. This group hears the message. They hear the truth, the seeds of the gospel. But then they allow the adversary to come and, and take that word out of their heart. What a sad position. How does he do this? How does our adversary take that word out of our heart? My answer is distraction. Distracting us from what is truly important keeping the main thing, the main thing. Have you considered that this could be you here today? There's something, that was a rhetorical question. <laughs> but I always appreciate Ed's honesty. The birds. 
those who allow themselves to be used by the evil one to distract others from what is most important. Receiving the transitional, restorative word of God in our hearts. That is the most important thing. Receiving the transitional, restorative word of God in our hearts. I've been a bird before. Next, we have the rock. Aren't we all supposed to go to the rock? To be the rock? But the rocky ground represents those who hear and receive, but they're not rooted in the rock. There's no moisture. There's no soil for that, for that to grow. They believe for a time, but then they fall away with temptations. Then we have the thorns. These hear, but they have no active faith to resist the cares of the world, the riches the world has to offer, the pleasures that they think are there for them. I've been a thorn. And then we have the good ground. Finally, we have the ones who hear and accept the truth of God's word and they keep it to a mature relationship with him. And then it's full circle. As they become sowers of his word through their crop of a hundredfold. That's how it happens. And then we have the crop. That's a result of being good ground. If we're good ground, we have a crop. Period. If we're good ground, we are producing such that would bring others into the kingdom. Take a moment to determine which char parable, which character from this parable you identify with. In our hearts, we probably are or have been many of the individuals that are represented in this parable, perhaps all at some point. But the really, really incredible thing about this parable that Jesus told is that the sower is consistent. The seed is consistent. What's different is the ground, how it's received. And what's really incredible is that the ground can change. If you identify with the rock. And you say, man, I was excited. I remember that, but man, it, just, it just went away. God can make that rock good ground. If you identify as the wayside, there, there are several people here that, that I, I don't really know all that well, so I, I don't want to be offensive at all. But I want you to understand that wherever you place yourself, whatever came to your mind as you were thinking about, oh, this is where I'm at, and it wasn't where you felt like you needed to be, God can change you into good ground. Wherever you've been, whatever you've done, the ground gets to choose what kind of soil it is. Now, Ed, I expected an amen after that one. <laughs> this past weekend, uh, we had a yard sale. I'm assuming that most all of you know that. And there were many neat characters that came through the yard sale. It was, it was a lot of fun. I really had a lot of fun. It's like my element. Aaron hates it. I love it. <laughs> is, that, is that true, honey? Yeah, that's true. Um, one, one elderly couple came through. They were Hispanic and didn't speak very much English. And he was not about to pay whatever price I put on it. Uh, if, you know, and and I, was, I was motivated to get rid of things because I didn't want to touch them again. I had touched everything in that gym at least twice, some things four times. I was done. And so I put prices on there thinking, this is really going to go. And he's like, how much you want? And I'd say three. He goes, mm, two. 
fine, whatever. But he purchased a jack, a car jack. And we knew going in that the car jack did not work. We couldn't get the, the thing to turn to lock or unlock. I guess it was unlocked. Couldn't get it to lock. But he bought it. I had $25 on it. Do you think he gave me $25? He did not. He gave me $20. I was happy. Move along. So after he got his pile of stuff, he and his wife got their pile of stuff together and paid for it. I'm helping him get this 60-pound steel craftsman jack out to his car. Get it out to his car. I pick it up, put it in his trunk, which he had evidently been visiting a lot of yard sales that day because there was a lot of stuff in his trunk. Got in his trunk and said goodbye. Now, Sunday, he and his wife come back. Like, oh, great, he's looking for more deals. And he's, they're walking around looking at things, and he's on the phone, and he comes over to me, and he hands the phone. And he handed the phone to somebody before me, and I don't remember who it was. They gave me the phone. Was you? Okay. So Deborah's like, ah, I don't know here. So I pick up the phone, and it's his daughter who speaks English. And she says, hey, my dad bought a jack, but he's missing the top pole to the handle. I said, no, he's not. I put it in the trunk. <laughs> I did it. I, I mean, she was talking to the right person. And so I, I ex expressed her. I said, no, I helped him get it out to the car. It was there. I, I put it in the trunk, so it, it must be in the trunk. And uh, I said, so I don't know what to say. So <laughs> I hand the phone back to him, and I just go about doing whatever I was doing. And so... He, he finishes talking to her, and he's looking at me like he doesn't believe me. And I said, remember, you know, and I went through the motions and sign language of, you know, lifting and doing. And I said, I put it in your trunk. And so he's like, what could he do but go out and check in the trunk? And then he came back and said, I found it. <laughs> it was there. It was, it was one of those, these great experiences. But there was, there was another couple that were there. And they were walking around, it was, it was really funny, they were walking around encouraging each other to buy things that the other one didn't think they needed. Yeah. Husband and wife. And he, he would look at something and she was like, you need that. He's like, no, I don't. You need that. No, I don't. Okay, I'll get it. Which worked out really well for the yard sale because they spent over $400. Worked out really well for the art sale. But one of the things that she bought was a brown glass uh, candle holder. Just a single candle, brown, uh, kind of a stained glass looking, looking thing. And she said it was, of all the stuff that was there for this stuff, that was the one thing that was her style. Okay, great. And after they left, someone found a set of three of the same thing, but just smaller. It was it would sit on a little stand, and there were three of them, but they looked exactly the same as the ones she had gotten. And so now I needed to get in touch with her to tell her I got something else for you to buy. But I didn't have her phone number. But luckily, she didn't have enough money, and she ended up having to pay with a cash app, uh, a Venmo which went to my account, and thank you, Prissy, for fixing that. And um, because of that, her, sister, her daughter, excuse me, had paid, because she didn't do that, her daughter paid, and so I had her daughter's information on my account. I'm like, okay, cool, I'll send her a message. Well, you can't do that. You, in this particular one, you can send a message when you're sending money, but you can't send a message once you receive it. Ah, what do I do? Is it worth a dollar? So I paid the daughter a dollar, and when I paid that dollar, I sent a message that said, hey, have your mom call me because I found something else that she's going to want. So it worked. And she called me. She said, all right, what do you have? And so I told her, and then I sent her a picture of it. And she said, all right, I'll be there Sunday to pick it up. That was really cool, because when she came Sunday, of course, she had she she brought her husband, and uh, they found other stuff that they needed to buy, but didn't want to buy. And one of the things that she wanted was something 
similar to that, and so, of course, she wanted a deal, and instead of the $25, it was going to be $50. And I told her, I said, well, technically, it's only $49, because I paid a dollar to get you the message, and she gave me a dollar. <laughs> it was good stuff. But as they were checking out, we had a rapport going now. I couldn't tell you their names. But we had a rapport going back and forth. We were, we were enjoying each other's company. And she said, Seventh-day Adventist. I, I don't really, I guess I don't really know. What, what's that all about? She asked the right person. Because I was ready to talk. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, the three big things... We go to church on Saturday. Saturday is our Sabbath. We don't believe in an eternal burning hell. It just doesn't make sense that God would do that to us for a few years here of mistakes. And then what happens to you when you die? Those are considered, at least, in, at least to me, those are the three big differences. And she... Uh, well, I shouldn't say she. One of them said, you know, I guess I have a problem with people sliding in under the, under the rail right there at the end. So, well, you know, there's a parable about that, how, you know, the, the guy needed people to work and he, they agreed on a fee and he paid this person that worked eight hours the same as he paid the person that worked one hour. Yeah, I know, but phew, that was tough to swallow. I said, I get that. I get that. And in that exchange, her demeanor changed. And it, it, was, it didn't change to unkind or unreceptive or anything like that, but she was done. She was finished talking about it, and she said, Honey, I'll, I'll, meet, I'll meet you out in the truck. Well, he and I were still talking about uh, a drill that he needed to buy. <laughs> and so I'm walking over with him to get the drill, and I get over there because I've, I've already told him about it, and I've already sold it to him, and it's not even there. I, I have no idea what happened. I don't remember seeing it go. Um, I wouldn't think that somebody would have taken it, but I guess it's possible. I, I don't know. But it gave us extra time to talk some more. And in our conversation, we talked about a little bit about what we believe, about soul sleep. And we talked about this idea that that God, God has to be logical. And it's not logical for me to spend 50 years on, a, on earth and not choose God and him to be so mad that I didn't choose him that he tortures me for eternity. That, in my brain, that's not a logical God. That doesn't make sense to me. And it didn't make sense to him either. He said, I never thought about it that way. And we finished our conversation. And he left. And I have no idea if I'll ever see them again. But last Sunday afternoon, I was the sower. And I don't say that. It was an opportunity to sow. And now it's up to them as to what kind of ground they become. Just like it's up to you what kind of ground you are today. Father in heaven, you didn't tell this parable so that we could read it and nod our heads and go about our life. You told this parable so that we would consider 
the ground that we are. You told this parable so that we would not waste our time on things that don't matter. And so that we would think honestly and discuss with you what it is we can do to become good ground. And Lord, today I pray that this would be our prayer with you today. What can we do to become good ground, Lord? In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand for our closing hymn. Thank you.